Welcome to part two of this tutorial series where we're creating this sci-fi airlock or sci-fi corridor in Blender. So this is where we left off in part one. So we had done all the modeling for the tunnel. And so in this part, we're gonna finish all the modeling by modeling the sci-fi doors at the end of the tunnel. If you'd like to purchase the project files of this tutorial, then you can get that on my Gumroad store and my Patreon page with the links in the description. And that's a great way to help support this channel. And another great way to help support this channel is by checking out my recently released product, my Ultimate Blender Procedural Material Pack. So if you're a regular viewer of my channel, then you know that I create many procedural material tutorials. And so I've recently compiled all of my procedural materials together into an ultimate procedural material pack. And all of the materials have been pre-set up as assets for Blender's asset browser with custom thumbnails and sorted catalogs. And each procedural material has also been joined together into a custom node group with different custom sliders. So you can change the material for each use. And when you purchase the material pack, you'll get updates with future materials with no extra cost. If you'd like to check out the trailer video, I'll have the link in the description, and I'll also have the link in the description where you can purchase the Ultimate Material Pack on my Gumroad store as well as the Blender Market. And purchasing the Material Pack is a great way to help support this channel. Alright, so let's now create the back wall with the airlock door. So I'm going to start by just selecting the main object here, and I'm going to duplicate the entire object, and I'm going to bring it back. And then I don't want it to be arrayed, so right here on the array modifier, I'm just going to hit the X button to delete that. And then I will go into edit mode. And I'm going to hold down the alt key and just select that loop there, which is on the edge of the tunnel. And then I can invert the selection with control I. And then I'm just going to delete all the vertices. So now we just have that little edge there. And then also if I kind of zoom in here, I can select that vertex there and I don't need that vertex. So I will delete it and I'm going to dissolve the vertices and that'll get rid of that vertex there, but it'll keep the edge connected. Now I also want to be able to see the mirror on the other side in edit mode. So right here on the mirror modifier, I can click on this button just to see the mirror on the other side. So I'm now going to select the entire object in edit mode and I will extrude it and then I will scale it right after that. And I'm going to scale it up and then I can also bring it over just like that. Maybe make it a bit bigger and bring it over. And then I need to recalculate the normals. You can see the shading is a bit weird. So I'll just select everything and recalculate the normals. So I'm going to go into the camera view and then I'm going to go into edit mode. And then I'm just going to, again, hold down the alt key and just select that loop there. And I'm going to scale this down, make it a bit smaller and kind of bring it in a bit. So I'll bring it in towards the mirror. I can also scale this and then I can hit shift Y and shift Y will exclude the Y axis. So it'll bring it in on the Z and X. So I can now extrude this back, so I'll bring it back, just bring it back on the y-axis, just like that. I'm going to go back to object mode, and then I'm going to go to top view, and I will just bring this object over, so I'll just bring it like that, just stick it up to the edge of that tunnel. So I'm now going to go back to edit mode, and I'm just going to zoom into this object here, and I'm just going to select this entire loop right here. And then I'm just going to duplicate this, and I'm going to bring it out a little bit, and then I want to scale the entire thing up and bring it out a little bit. And then I can extrude the entire thing back in like that. And that might be a bit too thick, so I think I will select this and bring it in a little bit. And then I want to select the entire thing. And then I can extrude this. And then right after I extrude it, I want to scale it. And then I just want to exclude the Y axis so it doesn't get smaller on the Y axis. So I can just hit Shift Y. Kind of bring that in there. And I also want to bring it in a little bit. And also if I go to front view, this could help a bit. So I can now just kind of scale this. So I'll bring it up on the Z axis a little bit. So we're basically just creating a little piece of metal, which is kind of going along that tunnel there. And also I need to select the entire thing and then recalculate the normals. And then I think I want the entire thing to be a little bit smaller because I do want some space there in between the edge of the wall and then the tunnel door. So I'm going to go to front view and I'm going to go into wireframe. And then I can just use the box select. I'm going to box select those vertices and those vertices and those vertices and I can kind of just scale the whole thing down and kind of bring it in a little bit so something like that is a bit better and then because I scaled the entire thing down I actually need to flatten back out these faces here so what I can do is just hold down the alt key and select those entire faces right there so all the faces around and I'm just going to scale these I'll scale them on the y-axis and then I can just type zero just to flatten it and squish it down. And then also if I go right up here to the side or go to the edge, I need to bring this in a little bit 
So just bring it in like that. And then just like the other objects, I wanna add a bevel modifier to this object. So let's select this object here. And you can see there's the bevel modifier. It's already on the object, but it's really small. So let's just turn the amount up so you can see it a bit better. And then we also need to shade the object smooth. So let's now model the doors. So I will just bring the 3D cursor into the center of the scene. And now I'm gonna start by just adding a cube and I will go into edit mode and I'm just gonna scale the cube way down so it's much more thin. So I'll scale it on the Y axis. Just bring it in like that. Go back to object mode. I'm gonna go to the top view and I'm just gonna bring this over here and then I can just zoom into it and I'll go back into edit mode. And I'm gonna scale this down even more so it's even more thin. And back in object mode, I can kind of just bring this up here and I can bring it back a little bit. And then in edit mode, I also want to bring it over to the side here. I want to bring it over to this side. And this way I can go to add modifier and I can add the mirror modifier. And I'm going to use the X axis. So now we have the two doors. I also need to scale this up on the z-axis a little bit so it fills that space and I want to zoom in pretty close and I want to bring it pretty close so there should just be a tiny little gap in there but it should be pretty small and then I also want to add the bevel modifier so let's go to add modifier we can add the bevel modifier and then I can turn the segments up maybe to like four and then I can also shade the object smooth and I will turn the amount down on the bevel just so it's a very tiny bevel but now you can see there's a little bevel there on that edge now I want to have a cool little metal beam piece that kind of goes along here and then it kind of goes over here and then there's also going to be another beam which is going up and down and so because of that right over here I do need a little bit of space in between this lip here and the actual doorway because you know if it's going to open up it's going to need some space there so just make sure that there's a little bit of space I think I might even bring this forward so the space is a little bit smaller so I'm going to go into edit mode at the door and I can just select the front face and I will duplicate it and then I'm going to scale it down just make it really thin like that and I'm actually going to bring it out just like that so I'll bring it as far as it can go before it hits into that lip there on the doorway and then I can extrude it back and I'm just going to stick it right there. So just stick it right there so that it's touching the very starting of the door. And I can also scale it up. So I'll just bring it up on the Z-axis. I can also select this face here and I can bring it down to make it a little bit more thin. And I think I will select the entire thing and just scale it down a little bit. And then again, recalculate the normals. And also I think I want this bevel to be smaller. So let's make the bevel even smaller, just something like that. So I now want to add a few details onto this little beam. So I'm first going to just add some loop cuts so I'm going to add a loop cut here and then I'm going to add another loop cut and I'll put this one maybe about there I can just select this face and I'm just going to inset the face kind of bring it in a little bit and then I can extrude that face back and maybe just select that loop right there. I can just kind of zoom out here to kind of see the size of it. And I think I want to make it a bit smaller. So something like that. And also something that I noticed, I think the doorway is just a little bit too long coming out here. So what I'm going to do is just go back to object mode and I can select the other object and I will go to front view and then go into edit mode of the other object. And I'll go into wireframe and I can just box select this edge here and I can kind of bring it in a little bit. And I might even select this edge here and this edge here and just bring it in a little bit because I don't really like the shape of it. So that is a bit better. All right, go back to object mode and select this object again and go back into edit mode. Now I also wanna create some more sci-fi details over here. So I'm gonna create like some little gaps. So I'm going to add a loop cut and I'll just bring this loop cut over here. Then I can add another loop cut and I'll bring that over there. And then in between these two loop cuts, I'm going to add more loop cuts. So I'll add two more loop cuts and I can just drop the loop cuts in the center. And then I also want to add a loop cut here in the very center going horizontal. So I'm just going to add a loop cut right there. All right. So we basically just cut out this little area so I can now go here to the face select and I'm going to select this face, hold down the shift key and just select those other faces. So I'm now just going to extrude the faces back in just like that. And then I can also bring the faces up on the Z axis a bit. And then I can also go to the edge select and I can just select these two edges here. So you might need to go into wireframe to see them. And I can just kind of bring them up on the Z axis. If I go to front view, I just want to make that kind of flat there. And I think I'm actually going to go to wireframe and I'm just going to box select all of those details there. And I can scale them in a little bit and I can also drag them around to get it somewhere where I like. And back in edit mode, I also just want to select one of these faces. So I'm just going to like click on this face and I'm going to duplicate this face, scale it up a little bit 
and I can kind of bring it over here, maybe make it a bit smaller, and then I can extrude it back to the end of the door, and I can also scale it up a little bit just to make another cool detail. And then I wanna create kind of like another panel or another piece of metal. So I'm just going to select this big face here and I'm gonna duplicate it and kind of bring it out and kind of bring it over. And I just want it to be coming out a tiny little bit. So I'll just stick it about there and then I can extrude it back to give it some thickness. I also need to select the entire object and recalculate the normals. And then I want to give this new piece a cool shape. So I'm going to add a loop cut right here. Just kind of drop the loop cut there, maybe a little bit higher actually. Then I can add another loop cut and I'm going to bring this loop cut up here. So now I can go to the face select. I'm just gonna select this face here and I can bring the face over, just stick it about there. And then I wanna go back to the vertex select and I'm gonna hold down the Alt key and just select that loop. And I'll just bring this down and place it about there. And maybe even select this face and I can bring this face back a bit. So now we have a cool sci-fi shape. All right, so that is looking really cool, but I don't actually want the doors to be symmetrical. I want it to be different on this other side. So I'll go back to object mode and with the door selected, I can click on the drop down and just apply the mirror modifier. So I can now go into edit mode and I can change this side of the doorway. So I can start by just selecting this entire piece here and I can just delete the vertices. And then also I kind of want to change this shape here. So I'm actually going to bring this out kind of bring it over here. And then if I select this face, I wanna bring this back. And then I can also select this face here and also this face here. And I can select these other faces as well. And I can bring the entire thing down. So I'll just like stick it way down here so that we do have that cool sci-fi shape but that is looking pretty cool. And then what I can also do is hover my mouse over this little beam here and press the L key. And I just want to delete this part right here. So what I'm gonna do is go into wireframe and then using the box select, I can just deselect this area by clicking with my middle mouse wheel and letting go and then I can just delete that half so then I can just select the entire loop right there and I can extrude that out and just bring it over now I actually don't want to bring it over too far because I want to have another beam which is going up and down so I'm actually just gonna bring this back to about there so now what I can do is duplicate the loop which I have selected and then I want to rotate the loop and I'm gonna rotate it by 90 degrees and I can also bring it out just a little bit and scale it up so it's a little bit bigger and then I can bring it up. So I'm gonna bring it all the way up here. So it's really high up. And then I can extrude it down. I'll just bring it down on the Z axis. And I'm gonna bring it all the way down there. So now I have a cool little beam which is going up and down. And then I think I will select the entire beam here. And I think I might bring this over a little bit because I want it a bit more towards the center of the door. And then this little detail right over here with these little insets, I wanna put that right down here because I think that would be pretty cool as well. So I'm just gonna add a loop cut just bring the loop cut right down there. Also add another loop cut and I can put that right about there. And then I can add two more loop cuts in the center of those. And I'm gonna select these four faces and I can just extrude those faces back in. I can also just bring them over a little bit to kind of flatten that area right there. And that is pretty good. If I go to front view, I can go to wireframe and with the vertex select, I'm just gonna box select that entire little area. I can go back to solid view and then I can kind of scale it. I think I want to bring it down a bit and I can also bring it up and down on the Z axis. So that is looking pretty cool. All right, so the last thing that I'm going to do in this part is to model a little sci-fi panel here with some buttons. And so this little sci-fi panel, maybe it's where you would punch in like a password to open the doors or just have some controls for the airlock. So I'm just gonna bring the 3D cursor right here. I will just add a cube. And I'm gonna scale the cube way down. And now that I've scaled it way down, just so that the modifier sizes don't get messed up, especially with the bevel, I will just apply the scale. Because if you scale an object way down and then add the bevel modifier, the bevel modifier will be really small. So if you change the size a lot of an object, it is best to apply the scale. So I'm just now gonna go into edit mode. So I think I'll make it a little bit longer up and down and I can kind of bring it in a little bit and kind of stick it back there. Just select this face. And I'm going to inset this face down a bit, and I can also scale this down like that. And then I can just bring it up on the Z axis, and then I want to make the little console here or the panel. So I'm just going to 
extrude that out and kind of scale this down to give it a cool look and it kind of has the same theme or style as these kind of pieces here because they kind of come out and then go back in so i'm trying to stay consistent with the sci-fi themes and then i also want to inset this face again so we'll inset that again and this one i want to scale it way in so it's much smaller like that and then i can just extrude this back and then i just want to duplicate this face here and i want to scale this down so it is about a square and I can also go to front view to see this a bit better and I want to bring this over kind of scale it down and we're gonna make some square buttons so I'm gonna have one button there and then I can duplicate this bring that down duplicate it again and then I also want to make kind of a, a light here so I'm gonna duplicate this and make it really long and make it a bit smaller and then I can select one of these buttons again and I'll duplicate this bring it down here and then I can duplicate this and I can bring it over and just drop it there and then because i did that all in one action i can use the shift r function and that's going to repeat the last action so it'll duplicate it and move it over so i'm going to have four buttons here and then i will have one more button over on this side all right so i'm now going to just hover my mouse over all the buttons and press the l key and that'll just select the linked vertices and i can bring them back in so I'm just gonna stick them there so they're kind of floating over that panel. And then I can just extrude them back to give them some thickness. And then I can also just select all of these buttons right here, and I can just bring the buttons back in. And then also I need to select the entire object and recalculate the normals. Now I still need to add a bevel modifier to this object because it is really sharp on the edges. Let's click on add modifier. I can add the bevel modifier. And I can turn up the segments just a little bit, and then I will shade the object smooth and then I can kind of change the size of it as well. All right, so I can kind of zoom out here and kind of see the size of that. I think I like that. You could make it a bit bigger or a bit smaller. I do think I want to bring it down a little bit, and then also to give it a bit more depth, I could just bring it out a little bit. All right, that is looking pretty good, so I will just save this project again, and this is going to wrap it up for this part of the tutorial series. So thank you so much for watching, and I hope you've been enjoying this so far. So in the next part, in part three, we are going to start texture painting the bump map of all all the sci-fi details along the tunnel wall. So I'll be uploading one or two parts each day of the tutorial series, so when the next part is released it'll be right up there on the end screen, and you can also find it with the link in the description. And if you've been enjoying these videos and you'd like to help support me and this channel, the best places to do that are by checking out my Gumroad store and my Patreon page, where you can get 3D models and assets, tutorial files, artwork project files, and procedural materials, and other Blender content. And as I mentioned at the beginning of this tutorial, you can also check out my ultimate blender procedural material pack if you like using procedural materials in your artwork. So thanks for watching and I will see you in part 3.